In his book, The Jungle, Upton Sinclair describes the horrid conditions of Chicago meatpacking plants. He described how the workers were mistreated, the meat was dirty, and the slaughterhouse a place of oppression. While the novel was a huge success, it was also a failure because Sinclair failed to get his point across. While he was trying to show the plight of the immigrant worker, his audience was much more concerned that their meat was dirty. As Sinclair famously said, I aimed for the public's heart and accidentally hit its stomach. Not that this was unusual for the time. During the Industrial Revolution and the Gilded Age, immigrants were very looked down upon and mistreated everywhere they went. They couldn't live in certain neighborhoods, work in certain jobs, or even visit some areas of the city. So all they could do was join together, otherwise they would never survive. This was also the case for their work. Many had hard, low-paying jobs because no one else would take them. Many workplaces of immigrants had jungle-like conditions or even worse conditions. They couldn't complain about their work or else they would get fired. To take on their bosses, workers had to band together and hope that their sheer numbers would get them to take notice. In that fashion, labor unions were born. Okay, maybe I'm slightly exaggerating, but there's no denying it. Labor unions would not be what they are today, or they wouldn't have had the impact that they did if it wasn't for immigrants during the Industrial Revolution. In the beginning, Americans originally had been founded by immigrants by the pilgrims and early protestants who were Christian settlers. They came so they could escape their land because of discrimination as well as to seek religious freedom by the English monarch. Immigration itself also had its ups and downs. Some years and areas in America had more jobs and laborers than others. By coming together, people from different cultures, religions, and backgrounds assembled as one, as America was known as the melting pot. After the Civil War, immigrants from all over the world came to America to seek the American dream, to find new opportunity and jobs. This was also known as the Big Boom. Immigrants, mostly from Germany and Ireland, immigrated to America because of poverty and famine issues. Several other people from the other countries came to America as well, such as people from France, Canada, Japan, and China, which was when the population increased. Although one thing began to strike Americans, Natives were starting to be wary of immigrants because they were strange and alien to them. With that came the issue of discrimination and the immigrant struggle for acceptance. This led to the problem of immigrants being shut out from jobs because of resentment. In the 1700s, a new way of manufacturing began to take place in England. This was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Instead of making things by hand, they began to use steam-powered engines. By the 1800s, this began to spread across from Europe to America. By creating products and assembly lines, this was considered the new way. The main idea of the Industrial Revolution was that parts could be interchangeable. Instead of a whole shoe being made at once by one shoemaker, dozens of parts could be made by dozens of unskilled workers. This led to a huge change in production style. Workers did not have to be skilled and therefore were disposable. Since there are low wages and unskilled workers, people with high amounts of skill were also not needed. As workers continued to work in assembly lines, as they continued with their repetitive jobs, more people could be hired for less. Since most people wouldn't accept such low wages, immigrants took those factory jobs. During the rise of the labor union, workers found many ways to negotiate. Knights of Labor were founded in 1869 9, by Terence Parley. The main issues they addressed were equal pay for men and women, eight hour work days, and to terminate child labor due to a strong organization. Although the Knights of Labor did not help lawyers, stockbrokers, doctors, and liquor manufacturers, the Knights of Labor were considered a secretive organization during this time. Late in 1886 of Columbus, Ohio was a new organization that began to emerge. This organization was known as the American Federalization of Labor, also known as the AFL. Samuel Gopher is the leader of this organization. When trade unions were formally organized, there were the rights of people most respected, he stated, as he organized and led strikes, boycotts, and negotiated with collective bargaining. This was also a strike and opposition to get noticed, although the result backfired as if nothing happened to begin with. Even though they tried their best, the results weren't noticeable at first. Upton Sinclair used to write dime novels and would write 8,000 words a week. Then at the age of 26, he became a socialist and started to write for a socialist weekly. One assignment he had was to report on meatpacking workers in Chicago. This would lead to the 1906 novel The Jungle, and as you already know, it missed its socialist mark. It does, however, show a rising interest in poor immigrant workers and labor unions. Another early failure led to the Triangle Waste Company fire. In 1909, 400 of its workers went on strike for better working conditions. Most of them had joined the Women's Trade Union League for help to stand up to their bosses, and in 1910, a historic agreement was met for unions. 
unfortunately did not get all the rights that they were fighting for, and the factory owners continued to run them as they did before. The result was tragic. In 1911, a fire broke out on a top floor at a Triangle East factory building that killed 143 workers. Most had either burned to death or jumped out of the windows onto the streets below. When people found out that the girls had died because of the greedy factory owners, they were outraged. Everyone from the underground press to the mainstream media demanded change and justice. While the fire was a tragedy, it helped the factory workers cause in the end. It helped regular people realize how factory workers were being treated. After many strikes, the government started to regulate factories and corporations. Labor unions became big. The pay for factory jobs was better and the working conditions fair. Unfortunately, this one last as the government began to slack and corporations became powerful again. Now labor unions aren't as large as they used to be. Many things contributed to the rise of labor unions during the Industrial Revolution, but the influx of immigrants had the greatest effect of all. As you have seen, the increase of immigrants helped pave the way to the Industrial Revolution. Without immigrant workers, industrialization wouldn't have had the big boom that happened if cheap migrant workers hadn't come to America. Likewise, since most other working Americans had better job security than immigrant workers, the immigrant workers had to band together if they wanted to confront their bosses about something. While not always successful in what they set out to do, the labor unions eventually had a big impact in America by changing how industries could treat and deal with their workers. This is important because all these things are still happening today. Factories are still spreading across this and other countries. Although the conditions may be somewhat better than they were in the past, millions of immigrant and foreign workers are stuck in tough, low-paying jobs with no way out. In all of this, they have to find a way to stand up to the bosses and have someone behind them when they demand better working conditions. This is where labor unions come in, perhaps the greatest achievement to come out of the Industrial Revolution.